Hello everybody, this is Marco Armando, I'm a child of adolescent psychiatry and I work with uh, Stefan Elies at the University of Geneva. Today I will describe you some results about a research that we recently conducted here in Geneva, which was aimed at exploring the correlation between stress, coping strategies and psychopathological feature in 22Q delusion syndrome. What we know from the general population is that there is indeed a huge correlation between exposure to stress and psychopathological feature, which means that in some way stressful life events can be considered as a risk factor in order to develop further psychopathological features. This correlation between the to in, it's in some way mediated by coping strategies, which mean the ability to adjust, to copy with stressful events. The point is that if we have a huge amount of scientific evidence concerning this correlation in the general population, we don't know that much about this correlation in 22Q division syndrome. So for this reason, we decided to conduct a study to explore this correlation in this specific population. So the aim of the study was indeed to explore the correlation between exposure to stress, psychopathological features, and coping strategies. Okay? In order to explore these three variables, we used three different measures, as you can see. To explore the exposure to stress, we used a scale which is called Coddington Life Event Scale, which is a scale able to measure, to explore the past and the present exposure to stress. To study the coping strategies, we used another questionnaire which is able to describe if the subject is able to use adaptive or negative coping strategies when he has to face to respond to stressful situation. And we also used some measure of psychopathological features, as you can see. But let's see what we have found. Okay, those are the, the, the descriptive results, let's say. So the first interesting results, which was a little bit unexpected in some way, is that on average, 22Q patients are less exposed to stress compared to the general population. So what we can say is that 22Q subjects are less exposed to stress compared to general population. Second evidence that we have found is that when we look about at the use of adaptive coping strategies, 22Q subject, subjects are less able to use Coping, adaptive coping strategies when they are exposed to stress compared to the general population. The third relevant finding is that when we talk about negative coping strategies, there's no difference between the two groups. So uh, 22Q subject and healthy control, they both have the tendency to use negative coping strategies when they are exposed to stress. There is no evidence that 22Q is more prone to use negative coping strategies compared to the general population. But when we decided to study a bit more in deep the correlation between exposure to stress, coping strategies, and psychopathological features, what we found is that, well, Indeed, exposure to stress, mostly past exposure to stress, is correlated with psychopathological feature in 22Q. So the most we are exposed to stress in the first period of uh, our life, or in many cases when we are exposed to stress, then we can develop psychopathological features. At the same time, the most we use negative coping strategy, the most we will develop psychopathology. So there is a correlation between previous exposure to stress and psychopathology, and there is also a correlation between negative coping strategies and psychopathology. 
But let's see how these three variables fits together, are correlated together. Okay? If we look at the 22Q subject, what we have found, which is really interesting, and it also has consequence in terms of therapeutic approach, as we will see in the next slide, is that the exposure to stress can indeed induce psychopathology. But it's not a linear correlation between the two. What is really important is the negative coping strategies, which mean that the exposure to stress has to be um, correlated with the presence of negative coping strategies in order to induce psychopathological features. Okay. What this means in terms of um, clinical response and therapeutic response. Let's see. Well, mm, first of all, the clinical consequence for us, for, for child and adolescent psychiatry who evaluate children and adolescents with 22 q delusion syndrome, is that we really have to assess very carefully the history of the patient. We really have to search in deep the presence of past exposure to stress. Secondly, what we have to do is to investigate in deep which are the coping strategies of the patient. Is the patient able to use adaptive coping strategies or does he have the tendency to use negative coping strategies when he is exposed to stress? So those are the first two relevant consequences in terms of the clinical approach that we have to, to use with our pa patient. But the third point, the therapeutic implication, which in my opinion is the most important, is that instead of reducing the exposure to stress in 22Q patient, which is already lower compared to general population, what we have to increase is the ability to use adaptive coping strategies, which means that we have to conduct or we have to put in place intervention which are coping-oriented intervention, which in means inter therapeutic intervention that increase the ability of the subject to use adaptive coping strategies. This will be a protective factor with which will protect the subject uh, uh, from psychopathological feature when he is exposed to um, stressful ideas. Well, I hope that I have been clear enough, clear enough and uh, thanks for listening to me.